In this video, I've got a zoomed in view of the detector, the aerial detector, so that we can see on this little display here how much the signal strength is. In this video, I'm going to look at making a stationary wave with microwaves. So I have got transmitter over here on the right, and that is giving out microwaves, and they are traveling this way, and then the microwaves are getting reflected from here and traveling back this way. So I have two waves that are the same frequency traveling in opposite directions, which interfere to form a stationary wave. And I have a uh, antenna here which can detect them. And then hopefully you can see that there is a scale down here which is measuring the signal strength. So at the moment, it's kind of getting a medium signal strength but if I slide this then hopefully you can see that the signal strength has gone up to 10 which is suggesting now I'm at an anti-node and if I move it on the signal strength reduces down to about 4 which would be a node and then I move it along the signal strength goes up to 10 which would be an anti-node and so I'm moving through node anti-node node, anti-node. And what I'm going to try and do is make a measurement of the wavelength using this. So I'm going to move it quite a bit this way and find uh, a node, which should get a minimum, which will be my node. And then I'm going to do what your teachers tell you not to do, which is draw on the table. So I'm marking that as a node. So I'll call that node zero, and then I've got, moving it along, that's node number one, node number two, node number three, node number four, node number five, node number six, node number seven, node number eight, node number 9 and node number 10. Let's just make sure I get node number 10 at the absolute minimum, as I'm then going to draw a line there marking node number 10. So I've gone from 0 up to 10 nodes, and now I can measure the distance uh, between those uh, using rather excessively long meter ruler. And if I put that down, I can see that that is about 14 centimetres. So 14 centimetres from the zeroth node to the tenth node. So you'll have to think about how many wavelengths that would be, and hence what the wavelength of the wave is. And then if I tell you that the frequency of the microwaves is 10.5 gigahertz, you should be able to use that to work out the speed of light. Let's now take the data from the video and see if you can calculate the wavelength of the waves and hence the speed of the waves. I have put in for you the frequency, which was from the specification of the microwave transmitter as 10.5 gigahertz. And then I've drawn a little diagram of showing how I moved from the zeroth to the tenth node. And that I measured as 14 centimetres. And then you ought to be able to deduce what one wavelength of these waves therefore is. Remember that between one node to the next would give you half a wavelength. So pause the video and deduce the wavelength of the waves and hence calculate the speed of the waves. Hopefully you have worked out that the wavelength will be a fifth of the distance that I measured because I've got five complete wavelengths because I've got 10 complete gaps from one node to the next which would give me one wavelength is 2.8 centimeters which I'll need to change into meters as 0.8 zero to eight meters. Speed of the waves we can then find using frequency times the wavelength using the wave equation which will give us 10.5 times 10 to the 
nine hertz times by our wavelength 0 0.028, which you should find comes out at approximately three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Hopefully you also thought about what I did to reduce the uncertainty in my measurement. And the key thing there was that I measured from the zeroth to the tenth node so that I could get uh, a distance which was actually five wavelengths. And then my uncertainty in measuring that distance will get divided by five when I actually work out for one wavelength. So I will have reduced the uncertainty considerably by doing that compared to measuring the distance from one node to the next one. This was a significant discovery because it proved that the speed of these waves was the same as the speed that Maxwell's theory predicted, and therefore it was compelling evidence that these were indeed electromagnetic waves that we couldn't see.